This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Now that we have a completed iPad app, MyPad World, we can rest easy. Except that now we have two apps to manage, an iPhone app called My World and an iPad app called MyPad World. Could we easily combine them into one app that runs on both devices, an iPhone and an iPad? Yes. And the way to have only one app to manage for both iPhone and iPad is to create a universal app. A universal app is optimized for both the iPad and the iPhone. And of course the iPod Touch, which is just like the iPhone. Creating a universal app gives you the opportunity to sell one app that supports all device types. This choice makes the download experience simpler for the users. You set one price for the app, or it's free, and the users can use the same copy of the app on both their iPhone and iPad without having to maintain two different versions. But of course, if you want to develop a universal app from an iPhone app, keep in mind that you still need to adapt your design for each device. You may be able to use the same user interface elements for both the iPhone and the iPad, but the layout usually differs dramatically due to the iPad's larger display. For example, in SoundHound, which is a universal app, the iPhone display shows a large tap button and icons for the What's Hot section and for other sections. But the iPad version shows the What's Hot section and other sections on the main screen and uses a popover to show the tap button. We elected to use more of the iPad screen to show the animation, and we also decided to add a tap and swipe recognizer so that the user could use the app on an iPad in a much more iPad-like way than on an iPhone. On the iPhone, the app would be more likely to look like the utility app and have a flip side view. In any case, a universal app should preserve the primary functionality of both iPhone and iPad apps regardless of the device is actually running on. Even though the app running on an iPad might offer a more in-depth or interactive presentation than the version running on an iPhone, it's important to avoid making users feel like they're choosing between two entirely different apps. You should also adapt your images and artwork to the display size. Users tend to expect higher quality images and artwork in iPad apps than they do in iPhone apps. You should never consider just scaling up the images and graphics from an iPhone app to fill the iPad screen. Now here we are back in Xcode in the MyPad World app. Xcode simplifies the process of updating your main interface from an iPhone target to a universal target. In order to do that properly, we will actually open up the My Phone app in Xcode while also leaving open MyPad World app. And you'll see why in a minute. To open the My World app, we'll simply choose File, Open in our projects folder, click the projects file. Here we have the My World app for the iPhone. And in devices pop-up menu, it says iPhone, but it could also be iPad or Universal. Now, before we change the My World project, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the iPad project, the My Pad World app. We're going to create a snapshot of My World so that we can revert back to it in case we don't like what we did. We're going to essentially choose File, Create Snapshot. And we're going to provide a name and a short description for the snapshot. In this case, it's going to be My World Standalone Version. My World Standalone Version for the iPhone. And we're going to create the snapshot. And that's finished. Now, if we want to see that, we choose Window Organizer to see our projects. And if we select my world here, which is open, not only do we have the standalone version snapshot, but I created an earlier snapshot here. We revert to either one of these snapshots by clicking restore snapshot at the bottom here. And that's if we make so many changes that we don't like that we want to go back to the beginning again. So now we're ready to close the organizer view by clicking the red button here. So now we're ready to actually turn this iPhone app project, my world, into a universal app. We're going to choose Universal from the Devices pop-up menu. The first thing that happens is it asks us if we want to transition to a universal target and that the main interface used for running on iPhone can be used as a starting point for our iPad development. Would you like to copy and convert main window to be used as a starting point? And we want to do this because not only does it create the main window interface for us and connect it properly to the delegate, but it also creates an iPad group for us so that we can copy our code 
from the iPad app into the My World app into a specific group. So we click yes here. And as you can see, the iPad group over here in the Project Navigator has been created. And if we open that up, it has already established a main window iPad.xib file. And if we click on that, we'll see that it is really an iPad view, all done in black with a black background. And what it has right in the middle of it is a UI scroll view from the other main view. And what it has also is a UI scroll view from the other main window.xib file here, which is the iPhone one. As you can see, the UI scroll view is the size of an iPhone screen, which is what it should be, except of course for the status bar at the top. But it's copied that over into the iPad one as well, and we don't really need that. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the dock here, and we're going to open the window that it exists. And we're going to select scroll view, and we're going to delete that. And we can do that by just simply choosing edit, delete. Now we want to change this main window for the iPad version of our universal app. And in order to change it properly, we're going to open up my pad world again, which is actually still open and you can get to it through the window menu. You click the window menu and here's my pad world project right here. So we'll open that up. We'll also close some things so that we can make this window a little bit smaller and move it over to the side so that we can look at both of these pretty much the same way and drag from one to the other. So when we look at our main window in the iPad app, what we see, see if I can do this a little better, we'll close the dock for a minute. What we have here is the iPad screen and it's a white background. So one of the first things we want to do in the other My World app is do the same thing. Select window, go to the attributes inspector here by clicking the attributes inspector button, change the background, here in this menu to white, white color. So that's one thing we want to do. There's a few other things we absolutely need to do. Back to the MyPad World app again and open the dock this time. And we're going to see what we have to do. If we look at the files owner, and if we open up our utility pane, we'll see that its delegate is connected to MyPad App World app delegate, which is here. We don't have that over here. So one of the first things we need to do is drag this and the MyPad World View Controller reference both to the other project in the Interface Builder right here in the dock. The next thing we need to do is we take a look at this window and see what it's connected to. The window is connected to MyPad World App Delegate. The MyPad World App Delegate, which I've selected here in the dock, is connected to the files owner, the delegate method. The files owner, connecting into the delegate method, if we click the identity inspector, is UI application. The UI application uses this delegate, MyPad World App Delegate, to open this. So we go back to the connections inspector here and we see what we have to do. We have to connect the window reference outlet to MyPad App Delegate, and we have to connect the MyPad App Delegate to the files owner. So let's start looking here again and seeing what we really have to do. We select window and we see that we have to connect these two. So let's go to my world, select window, and open the connections panel. As you can see, the reference outlet is set to my world app delegate, and that's not what we want. So we're going to click the X on the left here, disconnect it. Now, before we actually connect window to my pad world app delegate, you can see that we need to actually drag the view controller code over here because we don't have it yet. So the first thing we need to do is go back to my pad world and take a look at our code. We need all of this code except main window. And we need these supporting files, or at least that one. So we're gonna start with that. We're gonna drag over exactly what we need. First, we'll drag over our windsurfer image. And of course, the copy option shows up so that we want to copy it into the destination group folder. Yes. And we want to add it to the target My World. So we click Finish, bringing Windsurfer over. Go back to the MyPad World app. And we're going to select the app delegate, header, and implementation files. And we're going to drag them directly to the iPad group here. 
We must go in the iPad group. We keep these options the same and we're adding to the same target. We go back to my pad world and we click my pad world view controller H M it's nib file and the settings controller H M and nib file. And now we drag all of these over into the iPad folder. And again, we leave our options the same and we add it to the target my world and click finish. Now we have our iPad code that we need for the universal app in the iPad folder right here, which we can close and open. And now we'll be ready to connect this window to the MyPad World app delegate and to connect the MyPad World app delegate to the files owner. But first we're going to choose file save so that the project is saved as is. So now we want to connect MyPad World app delegate, its referencing outlet to the files owner. And by doing so, the delegate method shows up and we select it. So my pad world app delegate is now connected to the files owner, which is UI application. So when this is run on an iPad, this one here is the one that will be open. We maintain two main windows, one for the iPhone and one for the iPad. Our next step is to connect this window here in the iPad window to the my pad world app delegate, which is right here. And after doing so, window pops up and we select that. We have now connected the window to the MyPad World app delegate, which is also connected to the files owner. So now we've done everything we need to do to create a universal app, unless of course there's a bug. We shall see, but first we can take a preview by looking at each code file. Our header files for MyPad World View, our implementation file for MyPad World View Controller, we can see that there are no warnings. There are no issues, in fact. In fact, if we click the issues pane right here, we can see that there are no issues. So apparently what we've done will work. Now, well, if you recall, in our MyPad World app, we had a constants file right here. Turns out we also did the same constants file for the iPhone app, and it's right here. So this should be just sufficient. We shouldn't need to bring in another constants file. In fact, we've used the same keywords. K words of wisdom, K speed, and K max speed. We're not going to be using K number of pages in the iPad app, but that's still being used in the iPhone app. So we don't want to clobber this constants file with the other one. We'd rather just use this one and see if it works. So now that we seem to have everything we need, we're ready to test this universal app. 